Good morning, everyone. As always, place your cross on first. No matter what's going on in your life, you know, you live for God, live for Him. Don't second guess, don't half step. Go with it. You understand? It's going to be good for you. Not only for you, but others around you. You know, when you start serving God, what you know what you're supposed to do? Spread. Just remember that. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Today I'm start reading from the second book of Moses, Exodus. Let's go with the flow on this. I don't know what I'm talking about. But hey, reading is reading. Exodus chapter 1. Now these are the names of the children of Israel which came into Egypt. Every man in his household came with Jacob. Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah. Issachar, Zebulun, and Benjamin. That's seven. Dan, and Naphtali, Gai, and Asher. And all the souls that came out of the loins of Jacob were 70 souls. For Joseph was in Egypt already. And Joseph died and all his brethren and all the generation. And the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly and multiplied and waxed exceedingly mighty. And the land was filled with them. Now there rose up a new king over Egypt which knew not Joseph. And he said unto this people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply. And it come to pass that when there falleth out any war, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us, and so get them up out of the land. Therefore they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens. And they built for Pharaoh treasure cities, five Python and Ramses. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. I like that line right there. The more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. I think it goes to your spiritual warfare. The Bible says the righteous will suffer. And you know affliction doesn't supposed to break us as children of the most high God. High God. It's supposed to grow us closer to God. But just think on that right for a second. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. And they were greed because of the children of Israel. And the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor. And they made their lives bitter with hard bondage and mortar and in brick and in all manner of service in the field. All their service where they made them serve was with rigor. And the king of Egypt spake to the Hebrew midwives, of which the name of the one was Shifra, and the name of the other Pua. And he said, when you do the office of a midwife to the Hebrew women and see to them, see them upon the stools, if it be a son, then you shall kill him. But if it be a daughter, then you shall, let, shall live. Then she shall live. But the midwives feared God. Now, think about this, people. When you fear God, you do the things that's pleasing to him. It don't matter if the king said it, do something. No matter if your boss said do something. If it's against God, you don't have to do it. Remember that now. Remember that all the days of your life. You don't have to go against the word of God. You don't. And the midwife said it to Pharaoh, because the Hebrew women are not as the Egyptian women. For they are lively and are delivered or er, the midwives come in unto them. Therefore God dealt with well with the midwives. Why did he deal well with the midwives? What they say is the beginning of understanding. 
the fear of God. The fear of God is the beginning of understanding. Even if they didn't know nothing else, they knew to fear God. Therefore, God dealt well with the midwives, and the people multiplied and waxed very mighty. And it came to pass, because the midwives feared God, that he made them houses. Even during the mid affliction and stuff like that. And Pharaoh charged all his people, saying, Every son that is born you shall cast into the river, and every daughter you shall save alive. Hmm. Ain't that amazing? That's where it starts. The fear of God. You know what's wrong with the world today? They don't fear God. And when you don't fear God, all types of things happen in your life. Especially in this world. And the thing is, let me tell you something. Good things can happen in your life when you don't fear God. Because you're living for the world. The world will take care of its own. But you know what though? When you fear God, he take care of you. Now what he said, they built them houses. You know, I'm not going to read too much more today. I think I already got my message. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. You see, ever since I started following the Christ, I gave my life over to God. When I first started, I thought everything was just going to be smooth sailing. I thought, I'm going to have the best house, best car, everything's just going to fall in my lap. But it wasn't that so, it wasn't that way. It took time. It takes time, and it's still taking time. But the thing is, out of all my afflictions, the Lord has delivered me out of all of them. And you know what? If you're a Christian and you're a saint, you can relate to it. No matter what, you've been delivered out of every affliction. And it didn't slow you down. It made you stronger. Take Job. During his affliction, he got stronger. Stronger and stronger. You see, the devil thought, for a show, only reason Job feared God was because he had abundance. That wasn't the case. Job feared and loved God because it was in his heart. And he loved God. It wasn't because he was rich that he loved God. But Satan thought that was the case. Let me tell you something. If you love God, it don't matter if you're rich or poor. You're going to serve him correctly. You understand? But let's put it this way. After Job's affliction, after everything was stripped from him, and he made it through, what happened? Job increased. God blessed him with double of what he had before, more children, and he lived a long life. You know why? Because he didn't give up in time of affliction. You just, that's what's wrong with a lot of us Christians. When we're going through things, we want to start blaming God. No, that's when you start trusting God more. That's when you grow in Christ. During your affliction time. So then when the latter rain comes. When the latter rain comes. When your season comes. You're already strong. In Christ. So you understand what I'm saying. Don't stop. Doing affliction. Multiply. And one thing you need to do. It keep. Fearing God. I tell you, if you fear God and the Spirit of the Lord dwells in you, you're going to do want to do what's pleasing to Him. Let's take somebody that's poor and needy 
and they fear God. You're not going to want to steal. You're not going to want to rob folks. Because the Bible says thou shalt not steal. And the Spirit of the Lord dwells in you. You're not going to do it. Why? Because from the Lord comes your help. Don't matter even when it's afflicted time. People. Let me pause and I will continue.